This shirt's from last year and it's way too big on me, but I really like it because it uh, tells you exactly what you should keep in mind when you go into the comments of today's video. So when I did the $550 gaming PC and I chose AMD as my processor, specifically the 8320, everyone kind of flipped their shit. And I knew as I was building that system, I was like, I'm gonna have to follow this up with a bottlenecking video. It's been a long time since I've done one, admittedly, all the way back to the 3770K. That was still new when I did a bottlenecking video, if that gives you any idea of how long it's been. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take some high-end hardware, play some games, and we're gonna take the 8320 and we're gonna play some games, both of them on GTX 1080s, we're gonna see how much of a FPS difference there really is. Today's video is brought to you by me. I made it, I, I brought it to you. All I'm asking is that if you're new around here, or if you've been lurking for a while, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'd like to join you here to the Cool Kids Club, showing that you have some of the best tastes in tech YouTubers in all of the internet. Ah, who am I kidding? This channel's mediocre at best, but I digress. Either way, I'd still like you to hit that subscribe button and hang around for a little bit. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So before we turn and get into some games, there is some methodology we have to get out of the way here. Our baseline is gonna be done on an Intel i7-5930K overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. It's got uh, 2800 megahertz DDR4 HyperX Predator RAM in there. It's running on a X99 for the win. And of course it is water cooled. Now, some of you are already gonna be like, that's not fair because that's not representing what the average gamer is gonna have. I'm not trying to replicate what the average gamer is gonna have. I'm trying to remove any possibility of any choke points or bottlenecks in the system to see exactly what the GTX 1080 is capable of when the CPU and all of that is not gonna be holding it back in any way. Now, the point of today's video is not to say that if you have an AMD system that you won't be bottlenecking or slowing down your FPS. The question is how much? So that's the point of today's video. If you've gotten any other impression out of this video, then I suggest you watch it again because that is not the goal here. Transition. We're gonna start off here with a little bit of 3D Mark Fire Strike normal because normal tends to have a higher score, which lets the GPU ramp up uh, and go as fast as it can because it can pump out a lot of frames in 1080. So here's what we're gonna do. Because this is a base test here, we're just gonna let the test go. We're gonna see what the GPU score is and the combined score to kind of compare what the differences are, and then we'll move on to some games. All right, so on the 5930K, we got a 22,194 graphics score. That's up slightly from the score I got uh, when I did my initial test, I think it was like 22,097 or something like that. Um, and then we got a combined score of 18,670. So that's our baseline. All right, so Metro Last Light here, super sampling is on, tessellation and all that's on normal, and then the settings are on very high. So we're gonna let this test run and check the FPS. So our average frame rate on that was 93.76 with a minimum, we're gonna look at minimums here where they're available, with a 13.92. Metro Last Light though, the minimums are kind of misleading, if you will, because when it starts, it goes in single digits sometimes. Okay, so next we're gonna be doing here some Rise of the Tomb Raider, and we're doing this in DX11 mode, not 12, because the AMD system is running on Windows 8.1, so I can't test that in DirectX 12. Uh, maybe that'd be a, a future video. How much does that alleviate some bottleneck? But I think we've already talked about that a bit. Anyway, here are the settings, uh, SMAA and all that junk. So let's go ahead and run the benchmark and then we'll see what, again, what our average FPS is. Rise of the Tomb Raider, overall score 130.06. So 130 FPS was our average. So here are the settings right here. Ambient occlusion high, everything's high and very high. Um, no reflection, MSAA, population density is all up. And then V-Sync off, TXAA is off, but MSAA is at 2X and FXAA is on. And of course we're at 1080. So those are the settings we're gonna apply and uh, we are going to do the beginning mission with Franklin where he has to repo the car. I like that because it's on a track and it's the same every time I do it. You can see the FPS counter up there in the corner. Obviously we're getting a lot of FPS here. So what we're gonna do, once we start the driving, I start my Fraps benchmark and then it will measure the FPS while I'm playing. Okay, so we got Fraps running up here. I'm gonna let it do its benchmark while we go. And then at the end of this, when we get to the parking garage, we'll stop it and we'll see what the average FPS was. All 
All right, average of 156 FPS. That's what that red number was. All right, next up is Shadow of Mordor. Preset is on Ultra. Of course, we're running 1080p with unlimited FPS. And we're going to go ahead and do the benchmark, and then we're going to follow the benchmark with actual gameplay to see what kind of variance there is there, too. Because I know, I'm not sure if this benchmark is as rough on the graphics and CPU as playing the actual game would be. So let's run this, see what the settings give us, and then we'll play some games, too. All right, average FPS, 165.21, a max of 233, and a minimum of 98, technically 99, because it's 98.94. All right, so let's get into a game and see if we get those same type of uh, FPS. I don't think we will, because I believe in the game, I think it's limited. But I've spent a long time since I played this game, I'm not sure. Yeah, so just like I thought, inside the game here, we are limited to 100 FPS. Okay, so as expected, the FPS is just locked at 100. So I guess we're gonna see if we get any less than 100 on the AMD system. Transition. Okay, so as we start the Metro Last Light test here, I put some stuff up on the screen for you guys to check out. We've got the GPU temperature, GPU usage, and GPU frequency, as well as the CPU temperature and the CPU usage on the bottom. So what you kind of want to look for now going forward on these tests with the AMD system is as the CPU usage goes up you'll probably see the GPU usage start to go down because the GPU is having to wait for the CPU to finish whatever tasks it has going in its queue. But so far though, it doesn't look like the GPU is bouncing around too much. I mean, it's sitting in the upper 90s, it went down to the 70s for a second and back up to the 90s. And you can see the temperature is going up on the GPU and the frequency is staying pretty steady. So we'll just let this run and then we'll compare it to the first result on the i7 system. So here's a score, 85.21, a minimum frame rate of 1.17. There were some pretty, there was like two or three major stutters in there during explosions, and that's obviously where that minimum frame rate came from. Uh, but yeah, so here's how those compared to the i7. All right, so in Rise of the Tomb Raider, you can see the GPU usage in percentage right there is down quite a bit compared to the CPU usage going up. So you can see the CPU usage is sitting right around 75 to 50. It's bouncing around quite a bit. But as the CPU usage goes up, you'll notice the GPU usage goes down. So you can see our here, our overall score is a 92.62. And that's how this compared to the i7 system here. So you can see there's a difference. Question is how much? I don't know, I'm, I'm actually putting up the differences here. I forgot what the scores were. So I'm gonna kind of learn along with you. All right, same test here with Grand Theft Auto V. Okay, and the average on this one was 91. So that came down a bit, obviously, from the i7 system, which is funny because the CPU wasn't pegged, but the GPU wasn't going to 100% either. All right, Shadow of Mordor is up. We're gonna run the benchmark, and then just like before, we're gonna run the game. Okay, so here's before and after with Shadow of Mordor. Average FPS 125.9, max FPS 205.61, and minimum FPS 81. And that's how that compared to the i7 system. Now in the game, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see the same results as before, just a cap of 100 FPS, even with the AMD system. Yep, we are still sitting at that 100 FPS number. CPU usage is down in the 40s and high 30s. GPU usage is in the 60s. Okay, one last test to do, that is the Fire Strike score. And based on what we've seen so far, uh, across the board, we would expect to see the GPU score on Fire Strike fall. Um, how much? I don't know. We know the combined score is definitely going to be lower because of the fact that the i7 system is a extreme, you know, x99 motherboard with a 12-thread CPU in there that is overclocked. So I obviously the combined score will be lower here. But what we care about is the GPU score. Is the CPU causing the GPU to slow down? I mean, it is, but the question is how much?
Okay, so here's the final result, 11,729 on the combined. We expected that to come down. It came down about 7,000 points, but the graphic score only came down a little under 400 points there. As you can see, 21,833 is what we got versus a 22,200 something on the i7. So it really wasn't that much different. Now one could almost deduce from the Firestrike scores that the 8320 is not really bottlenecking the GTX 1080. Now the reason why that test shows very close scores compared to the actual games is the fact that Firestrike is optimized to stress the GPU and put all of the tasks on the GPU with the exception of the combined uh, physics with the CPU and the CPU only test. That's why the combined score or the total score is much lower. Now in the case of games, what's actually happening here is the CPU is taking longer to do its CPU specific tasks like figuring out where characters are, where to put these things on the screen, what's actually happening in the game because it's not on a track and preloaded like synthetic benchmarks. So the GPU spends some time waiting, which is why it doesn't spend all of its time up in the 90, 95, 99% usage range because the CPU is handling its overall job a lot slower. Again, as I said in the beginning though, today's video is not about whether or not AMD does or doesn't bottleneck. I think it goes without saying that it does create a choke point in your system if you match an AMD like 8320 or 8350 with a very high-end modern GPU like the GTX 1080 or God forbid even like a Titan Pascal. Now the percentage of which your games are gonna slow down is gonna depend on the optimization of the game itself and how much CPU it really relies on. There's obviously very CPU dependent games out there like City Skylines, I think it's called, forgive me if I got that wrong. Obviously there's games like DayZ, HN, H1, N1, whatever. Those types of games use a lot of CPU because there's a lot of things it has to calculate that's happening in the world because the world is handled by the CPU, the eye candy is handled by the GPU. So that's why things like Firestrike didn't show nearly as much of a slowdown. Obviously I don't think you should buy a 1080 and stick it in an AMD system because you're going to get a pretty diminished return on that investment. But I was just kind of curious after I did that last video, how much does it really slow it down? You put in a mid-range GPU like a 950 or a 1050, well if it doesn't exist yet, or a 1060 or something like that, you're not going to see as much of a bottleneck, but uh, as, at least as you did with a 1080, but the chances of there being a few percentage points of difference in FPS is definitely going to be there. Because again, the CPU is still having to handle those same tasks that it was having a hard time doing with the 1080 anyway. What's happening is you put a lower end GPU that can't render those massive amount of frames anyway, then it's not waiting for the CPU because they're operating at a more equal level and in tandem. All right guys, time to go. Hope this video has helped. As I said, careful. Careful if you go down into the comment section of this video. It's going to be a flame fest. I don't even think I'm gonna visit that myself. I did the video, I did it the way I wanted to do it, and the information's there, take it for what you will. Time to go guys. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.